I can't be the only one that's who that's been very happy about the situation, but there's always this other character that's also partly responsible or indirectly responsible for a lot of things. I it was already told that she was mentally unstable, but I didn't expect it to be this terrifying, at least the same level as Akito. Call me Crazy Milanakis, but hey man, whatever the case may be, let's just get this started. We have to it that is we have to it that Hiro ends up looking at his little baby sister, which is pretty cute, and you know there's some rumors about flying about Isuzu, you know? We don't really know what's happening with her right now, and you know, Yuki's been asking Hatsuharu, hey, do you know what Isuzu is? is? What Isuzu is currently, or what's her like condition right now? Hatsuharu says, I don't know. Why do you ask? Toru's really been concerned and she seems to be down in the dumps right now, you know? That's th that's the kind of thing that's the only thing that's been concerning. Hatsuharu not knowing the situation and that he's also concerned himself, you know, because we all know Hatsuharu, man. I love the guy as well. But he has not heard from Isuzu Ren, Isu, I mean, Isuzu, Isuzu for a long, for a while now, you know, and he's trying to figure that out himself. Eventually, we get to see a scene with Hiro and, you know, um, Kisa-san or Kisa-chan. Okay, that's just a little cringe, but... We see Hiro and Kisa talking with each other about, you know, Hiro being a big brother and he's concerned like, how is he going to be this kind of, how is he going to be that right role model or to help his little sister be going down the right path, you know? Eventually, he, he meets up with Hatsuharu and Kisa as well. They end up having a small talk with each other. But knowing that something is wrong and Hiro knowing that he decides to like um, speak out, he tells Hatsuharu about the situation with Isuzu. Of what happened to her a long time ago. Hatsuharu was shocked and even angered. I mean, it's not really shown, but the way how he, after he heard the story from Hiro and everything else, and Hiro taught, apologizing to Kisa what happened to her because of what he did, you know, because of something else here and there. Oh my gosh. I mean, that's when I, uh, that's when I really love Hatsuharu right here, man. I mean, he is one of the few. He's at least, or not, one of the few people willing to stand up to Akito. And now, what you got, I know what I said was a little minor spoiler ahead, but it, if you watch the episode, you'll get the idea. We had two that Hatsuharu decides to ask Akito, like, um, hey, did you try to kill Isuzu? Did you push off a building? And Akito's like, what are you talking about? Where are you hearing this from? An oracle. And he decided not to say Hiro's name because he knows very well Hiro will possibly be in trouble. And we have to it that I could just like, you're talking you're talking nonsense. You believe in oracles, but you don't believe me and your god or something? Now this is where it gets really heated up and he and he asked, Where is Isuzu? And Akito's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And Hatahara's like, don't go doing this to me. Where is she? You know? That kind of thing. And eventually um there was a scene at the very beginning where um Kureno was trying to wonder at the cat cottage, you know, because that because there's a there's always this cottage right here that only the cat is allowed, and eventually Kureno will later on be given the hint or be told like this woman has not been eat, eating eating for days and that she's been stuck in here for a while, you know. And we have two that Kureno looks at it and realizes it was Isuzu. He, he Kureno decides to confront Akito about it, and Hatsuharu realizes that freaking Akito locked Isuzu in there, you know. And Hatsuharu was so enraged and says, Hey, what the f is the deal? What the f is the deal here, you know? Now, what I'm doing is, may not be like the exact words, but hey, I'm speaking of how people would be really angry about, okay? So forgive me on that. So he pretty much says, What the f is the deal here? Sorry for repeating myself over and over again with that. And Akito's like, Hey, you dug her own grave. You chose her over me. What the heck's the deal here? Whose fault is that exactly, huh? And... Freaking Haru really grabs the body of the robe and says, Hey, 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 what? Cut out with this stupid BS. You want. What's. It's cut out with this BS whatsoever, and that he was this close. He was this close to want to punch her. Punch Akito very badly. He grabbed her by the shirt and then threw her at the col At the. Uh, at the column. Wooden column, and then. Or something. And. Ends up. Ends up. Looking like he was gonna punch Akito, man. And we get to see how he, how Hatsuharu wanted Isuzu in his entire life. He's like, I want her. I want her all of it. She belongs to me. She belongs to me kind of thing. But the one thing he does not realize is that 
he is the one that made her suffer without him not noticing it. Because, you know, when Hiro told her about Izutsu falling off, being pushed off a building, you know, and then, you know, another scene where, like, um, H Hiro tells Hatsu Haru that she's been trying to find a way to break your curse and her curse so they could be free. Get the hell out of here, you know, that kind of thing. You gotta help her, man. Otherwise, she's really going to die mentally and physically. That's when Hatsu Haru, you know, confronts Akito about it, about where Isuzu's condition and where she is, etc. Instead of, like, not punching Akito, he punched the wooden column that he pushed, or wooden, wooden, a wooden column or something, or whatever that Akito was pushed at, and broke, and somewhat broke that instead. I'm glad Hatsu Haru had a lot of self-control on that, you know? He does not know Akito is a girl or a woman, you know, that kind of thing. The one thing for certain is that, like, only Kureno, Shigure, Hattori, Yuki's older brother are the only ones that know that Akito is female. Whatever the case may be, I'm glad Hatsuharu helped did not punch Akito, and he was about to leave to go find Isuzu, you know? Knowing that she's in the hospital. And Akito was like, wait, hold on, and then Hatsuharu's like, don't speak another word say anything else I swear to life given to me I will kill you and I'll kill myself now I know what I said might be a little too explicit but that's what the subtitles will say or at least like um, what it would be saying and we have two Kureno tells Hatsuharu that go, go see Isuzu the one thing she said in her when she spoke was your name go over there don't come back don't ever come back. Well, what Kureno was trying to tell Hatsuharu, go to Isuzu and don't come back, man. This is your only chance. This is only your chance left. You know that kind of thing. And I see where Kureno's coming from, man. And there was a scene where, like, um, you know, a certain string of Hatsuharu. It looks like that thing or that bond was to was about to really rip. So I don't know if it's either because, like, um, what Akito might be doing or her her upbringing. But, you know, one of the maids or the servants of Akito was like trying to wonder, Hey, why did you do that? Whatever Akito wants is what she should wish for. You're, you should know your place. Without her, you guys would be nothing more than that of the cat monster. I'm like, woman, shut the hell up, man. Okay, I'm kind of ticked off so bad. This woman says, know your place. I'm like, can I punch this slap this woman some sense? Because... Honestly, calling someone a monster just because they have the cat spirit and they could transform into a monster doesn't mean they're a monster. Outside, they look like a monster, but inside, you never bother to look at. Which is really, which is really sad and ironic, right? Because sometimes in the outside of parents, when it comes to looking at people, they could be very scary or they could be possibly cruel. That is the reality. But they never bother to. They never bother to. See what they really are. Like um, as the saying goes by from a certain movie. They judge me before they even know me. <laughs> that aside. Akito you know. After Hatsuharu left was like saying. Why 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 is everyone betraying me. I'm, I was meant to be loved. I was meant to be loved. I know he told me father help me. Father help me. I'm like. Akito. If you really want to be loved man. Do actions. That will let people love you. Don't do something of the opposite. Where they're going to go like. What the hell? <laughs> that aside. Let's get to a scene with Ren. Oh my lord. Ren. 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 That. Ah, You know. I was told that she was mentally unstable. It's already obvious that it was set from that from the start. From the beginning of Fruits Basket. The final season. You know. But. There's one issue. How am I supposed to say it? Um, she is almost like Akito. She manipulated Ren to go grab something for her in Akito's room, you know? Something of a treasure and that I'll get you what you want. Where well, Izuzu wants to break the curse. But all that was a lie. And you know, Akito caught Ren, cuts her hair and says, I'll give you a choice. Go into exile or lose Hatsuharu's sight. I'm like... Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, dude! Uh, uh. Ah! Ah! I try to get to an understanding of Akito. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I I want to give her some sympathy and get an understanding, but there are some actions you just don't do, man. 
It's okay to be mad or jealous over some things, even simple trivial things, whatever the case may be, but look where that's gotten you. Uh, that aside, like I said, Ren, 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 Ren. She just manipulated Isuzu's good heart and says, I hate her, you know? I'm like, yeah, I, I think it's obvious from the get-go you never gave two sh about anyone else but yourself. I knew she was mentally unstable. I mean, I think she might be unstable because her lover passed away. I think that's the real case. There is no other explanation for it. I don't know, but one thing was sure. Ugh. We had two that Isuzu was in a hospital and escapes, you know, and she tries to go to a certain location and maybe die or something. I don't know, but one thing was sure she, f she left the hospital. She fell to the ground. She wants to have a dream about Haru, you know, because she loves him deep down. There's no denying that. She really loves him deep down in her heart. There's no denying that because Hatsuharu helped her ever since what her parents did to her, man. It makes me want to puke, etc. But eventually Hatsuharu finds her the next morning and then picks her up. And, th and we had to, uh, Ren tells Hatsuharu that she was unable to find what she was looking for to give him the key to his happiness. And Hatsuharu is like, then you're done. Your journey's over. Please come back home, okay? Without you, I am lonely. You are not a burden. You are mine, mine alone. Please stay with me. Hatsuharu just asked Isuzu to do that for him, you know? And eventually, um, Hat eventually Isuzu finally looks at a location of the end of her long journey, you know? And it finally ends, and she finally tells Hatsuharu... I'm back, you know, I'm really home. And she hugs Hatsuharu, and Hatsuharu's like, Welcome home. I'm glad. And you know what's the most funny thing about this too? Is that two girls were watching, or two children, were watching Hatsuharu and Isuzu. Hatsuharu carrying Isuzu and ends up hugging her. They were just watching. I'm like, that is so funny and yet so cute, man. I don't know, but one thing was sure is like, that was just... <laughs> Freaking awesome. But that aside, um, I'm glad Isuzu is finally free. Fine, you are, f you could go home. You're free, Isuzu. Please spend the rest of your days with Hatsuharu and be happy. That is all I can ask of you, man. That's all I can ask of you. And preview next episode is called, I mean, you know, right? So, <laughs> yeah. Looking forward to the next episode, you know, and, you know, when I see Hatsuharu and Isuzu's story, it looks like it comes to a good closure. Not yet of a good, happy ending yet, because we have yet to reach that, that transition or that location or event, but there's much more things to go, and I really hope many other characters get their happy endings too, but we'll have to see. I mean, Hatsuharu and Isuzu... Finally hooked up back together and say, Welcome back, you know? Let me hug you in my arms, you know? Yeah. Like I said, Akito and Ren. I thought Akito was worse, but Ren is like a little above that since she likes to do things in the shadows and cause a lot of trouble without getting her hands dirty. My gosh, man. I, I don't know. Those two really hate each other. That's fine and all. I'm thinking to myself, Woman, Ren, whatever the f your name is, if you really hated to have a kid... Go get surgery and take out those reproductive organs, okay? Then you can have all the bong, bong, bong all you want without any repercussions. Yeah, call me a little inappropriate for that, for my little implicit language here and there, but what do you want me to say? Anyways, I'm glad to see Hatsuharu and Ren having somewhat of a closure, but their real closure has yet to begin. There are many other characters that need their closures too of a certain happy ending road, but we'll have to see. So, until then, peeps, I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm Alpha Zero. Have a good day, and I'll see you guys next time, alright? Peace out. Bye-bye. Toot-toot!